Welcome back to the May 4th public hearing of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. We are now um, beginning our public hearing portion of the day. This hearing is being held via Zoom. And if you would like to testify on any item this afternoon, please join the Zoom meeting at the estimated time. Um, instructions for that will be on our screen as at the time we take testimony, as well as on our website. If you're interested in just watching the proceedings, please feel free to do that on our YouTube channel. So this uh, hearing is being live streamed. And um, as I said, we have three hearing items this afternoon, and I will turn it over to Corey Harala, our Director of Preservation, to take us through the hearing agenda. Okay, thanks, Sarah. And with that, we'll start with public hearing item number one, LPC 20-08771, an application for a binding report in the Borough of the Bronx, Lock 5650, Lot 1. See Orchard Beach Bathhouse and Promenade Individual Landmark, a modern classical style waterfront recreation complex with Beaux Arts elements designed by Imar Emery II and landscape architects Gilmore D. Clark and Michael Rapuano and built in 1934 to 37. The application is to construct barrier free access ramps and a bulkhead, enclose a covered pavilion, replace stairs and guardrails, modify masonry openings and paving, regrade a plaza, and install infill partitions, signage mechanical equipment, railings, and light fixtures. Okay, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Andrew, you now have control of the presentation. Okay, Stay thank you. For the record, and you may begin. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Sybil Young. I'm Parks' Historic Preservation Officer. Um, Parks is joined here today by our partners at EDC and our team of architects, materials conservators, and engineers led by Marvel Architects. Um, I'm going to turn it over to them very quickly because we do have a lot to show you today, but um, I also just wanted to note um, how very excited we all are to be here today um, with this proposal in front of you that will um, return this incredible resource back to the Bronx, back to the city. Um, much of uh, this pavilion has been uh, largely closed to the public for decades. Um, and with this project, um, which was based on multiple community input meetings, um, it will finally again um, be reopened for public use as it was intended. Um, and what you're gonna be reviewing here today are some of the changes that are required um, to bring the building up to code, to address the harsh environmental conditions, to create viable uh, public spaces, um, and also one really important goal, which is to provide universal accessibility so that everyone who comes to this site can experience it in the same way. Um, our, our team of conservators and architects have really studied every inch of this building and so in addition to um, the scope items that you'll be seeing as, at the public hearing level, um, we are also restoring or replacing in kind tens of thousands of square feet of limestone, terrazzo, glazed terracotta. We are replicating um, missing historic missing light fixtures, removing non-historic infill, um, restoring the historic clocks. Um, so uh, as you're looking at these changes, please uh, also keep in mind that at its core, this project uh, really will be a, a major work of restoration. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jonathan Marvel. Thank you. Thank you, Sybil, and good, good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Jonathan Marvel, principal at Marvel, and we are honored to be part of the team that's bringing Orchard Beach back to full use as a as a as a significant part of the Bronx's uh, history and 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 present day culture. This is an, a very actively used, even in its current state, facility uh, with salsa on Sundays and bathers and swimmers and uh, families uh, doing cookouts and celebrating uh, the the the, uh, the the beautiful Long Island Sound. Um, beach that Robert Moses built from scratch, uh, bringing sand from Gateway National Park and and uh, rockways, and uh, really creating a, 
a, a, a monumental, iconic, but totally artificial environment in its, in its day. It's now nestled into, into the, the sound very nicely, uh, but you can still see it from Mars. It's that big. Um, we are focusing on, on the entire uh, AMAR Embry facility with, with a, uh, a, a rigorous restoration process, uh, but, but also uh, a, a making it resilient, uh, keeping in mind Superstorm Sandy and the flooding that occurred. A lot of our design decisions are, are affected by, by this sense of resiliency and, and um, long-term uh, use of the building uh, and the 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 bring connecting the upland with the beach uh, with a uh, with an accessible route um, will be uh, the major new design uh, portion of the project. The rest is really uh, being a, you know strictly abiding by restoration and preservation standards. I'll now introduce Martha Bush from Marvel, uh, who will present to you the details of, of the effort. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, we have quite a bit to cover today, so we're gonna keep a pretty quick pace through the presentation. Um, so this slide notes our consultant team. We have Laura Buckner here from Building Conservation Associates for any specific uh, preservation questions. So our presentation is going to start with a quick project overview. Then we're gonna discuss six main design items and finish with a few additional important details. So starting with that project overview, we have an aerial view which shows the pavilion in its current condition as a gateway to the beach. So the project team met with the community twice initially and developed the goals for the pavilion as well as, as, well as other areas on the site. Based on that, our objectives specifically for the pavilion are to restore the architecture and circulation, provide equitable access to the pavilion, and provide viable spaces for the community. The areas we are addressing are inside the red dashed line in this plan, so it's not the entire building. Um, as, as was previously noted, the pavilion was built in the 1930s for the Parks Department and is an individual landmark. So historically, the areas we are addressing were the primary concession spaces and the public gathering spaces on the site. And currently, these areas are closed to the public except for the central exterior promenade. The next three slides show some views of the site historically and currently for reference. The curved arms of the building are referred to as the logias, logias and are part of the restoration. These are some additional historic and current views. So for making design decisions, we identified four project goals, historic preservation, resiliency, equity and access, and, and creating that viable public space. As Sybil noted, the largest part of the project is the restoration of the pavilion as it was constructed with the same materials. We have just two brief pages here to show you that, um, but we did wanna be clear that it is a, primarily a restoration. Specifically on the left, you can see some of the existing concrete on the building is in very bad shape. The high roofs of the loggias and the front columns are going to be fully reconstructed. Uh, limestone cladding will need to come off of the building so it can be reattached securely to the building. And whenever possible, we will be reusing the existing materials. Some materials that cannot be restored will be replaced in kind. Uh, we need new waterproofing under the promenade pavers and on all other roofs within the project scope. All pavers will be restored. Uh, we also have the glazed terracotta, metal gates, light fixtures, clocks, all will be restored. So there is definitely a flood risk for the building and we're taking this into consideration for everything we are proceeding with. We've also taken into consideration the original circulation on site. We think this is an important point that visitors arrived at the site and climbed the steps to the upper promenade and had this wonderful view of the beach and the ocean at the end of their journey. You know, currently the, this path is open, but without services in the building, it is not the most popular path to the beach. So our first design item is, addresses this access. 
So currently visitors have to climb these steps to the upper promenade. There's no way for someone in a wheelchair to make that climb and it is not welcoming you know, for those with kids or rolling coolers. So we're proposing tucking ramps alongside the stair on both sides. We will bring the ground up about four feet overall to make the climb more gradual along the landscape. The intention is to, is to clad these ramps to match the building. This is limestone. And these ramps in the steps will bring everyone up to the center of the promenade. The existing planters will be trimmed back to ease access, but we are maintaining the planters and trees. Because we are bringing the land up, the climb up the steps for those who are able is reduced. So next we're going to show the route from the upper promenade down to the beach, which is currently reached from a set of stairs. So for the parks department, it was very important to maintain the flexibility at this side of the building and uh, minimize the impact of any new access. Therefore, the team is proposing to replace one set of steps with a curving ramp. The other set of steps will re remain and it will be restored. The design of the ramp is inspired by some of the, the beautiful details we find at the pavilion. So this shows the ramp in the context of the full facade. The upper view is existing. The ramp is added in the view below on the, towards the left. View from the lower plaza, view from the boardwalk. Because the ramp is a switchback, it is compact, so it maximizes visibility of the historic facade. That was an important point for us. And the ramp curves away from the historic facade, so the new construction is clearly separate from the historic and the Loges are still fully accessible. There will be a guardrail rail and handrail for the entire length of the ramp, of course. And we'll be also addressing the guardrails at the upper loges. These will be restored, but also raised six inches as required by code. So this planned um, diagram uh, summarizes the proposed access options from the land side to the lower plaza and beach. Next, we're going to talk about the storefront and canopy at the beach level. We are proposing to bring back the concessions at this level as shown in yellow in the plan. And the bottom view here shows that we intend to provide a new storefront system that meets current thermal performance requirements. There is no uh, storefront existing at the moment. At the size of the storefront, the, we will provide new doors, which also meet requirements for thermal performance. And they also, they reference the historic design. So this shows the pro proposed restored facade on the right. New roll down doors will be included to protect the storefront for the long term. And this elevation shows the proposed storefront on the right with the restored metal grills. And the section through the storefront, the canopy will be restored to match the original design intent. Next, we're going to talk about the loges, the curving arms of the pavilion. The cement plaster wall at the upper loggia will be restored and control joints will be provided to reduce cracking in the future. Blade signs will be provided at the lower loggias for the concessionaires to let us know what, what they're selling. And at the lower loggias, the existing ceilings will need to be removed to make repairs on the uh, slab above. Now, elsewhere in the pavilion, we do not have drop ceilings like this. Usually just the structural beams are exposed. So we are proposing to expose the beams here, which will allow parks to more easily maintain the building. The concession counters at the lower loges no longer exist. 
we are proposing to recreate the original terracotta pattern with more durable terrazzo tiles, as shown on the right. And we're proposing to recreate the bronze and enamel globe fixtures using powder coated aluminum. So the rectangular spaces at the end of the loggias were historically called the waiting rooms. Parks is interested in having a future restaurant or event space on the north side of the pavilion at this level. This would involve a kitchen in the north wing in green with seating in both the north waiting room and adjacent loggia. So the existing waiting rooms are open air, but for this amenity to operate year round, we are proposing that as part of a later phase, the north waiting room have glass curtain wall added in the existing openings. So these are rendered views that show at some times of day, the glass will be reflective. So it's going to change the look of the facade somewhat. Similarly from the upper promenade with the glass on the right and from the west side. So we're proposing adding the curtain wall to the inside face of the window opening. So the curtain wall frame at the edges does not impinge on the openings of the windows. And this also means that the glass will be set back almost two and a half feet from the, the face of the building. The existing metalwork in the openings will be restored. Uh, the new curtain wall will be set inside from this. Uh, there will also be a single duct to supply heating, ventilation and cooling to the space. And by code a vestibule will be required and we are proposing a glass vestibule to minimize its effect on the open space. Historically, there were three pendant lights in the waiting rooms. We're not positive what these fixtures look like, but are proposing a cylinder fixture to reference the detail in the historic drawings on the left. We will need additional light fixtures in the waiting rooms to meet light requirements by code and are proposing lines of LED lights along the bottom of the ceiling beams, which will uplight and downlight the space. Uh, just we'll touch briefly on park signage. All of the existing signage on site will be uh, within our scope area will be removed. The Parks Department will be providing their standard signage designs as approved by the Public Design Commission. And where possible, these will be freestanding signs not attached to the building. So mostly simple signs in keeping with other parks sites. Next, we're going to talk about the rooftop equipment in guardrail. Now, in order for the lower levels of the pavilion to be occupied, they have to be ventilated. And based on the format of the building, this is only achievable here with rooftop units. We are also proposing that the large seating area be heated and cooled to comfort levels. So this space can be used for events in both the summer and shoulder season. This too requires rooftop equipment. And at the upper level, the future restaurant will also require rooftop equipment. This shows some existing equipment already on site. And um, an important thing to note is the proposed rooftop equipment is primarily visible from the land side of the building. From the beach side where visitors will spend most of their time, the equipment will be minimally visible. This is an elevation and plan showing the types of equipment proposed. Axons showing this equipment. In the lower right is a new pad mount electrical transformer, which will be above the design flood elevation, unlike the existing transformer. Uh, what this equipment typically looks like, including the, the pad mount transformer. So the orange in these views shows what we constructed as mock-ups on site, including rooftop guardrails. 
On the north side, some equipment will be provided at a later phase by the concessionaires, but we're showing everything in this view. The south side has less equipment, uh, but includes the transformer in red. This elevation is showing them the mock-ups. The proposed elevator overrun shown here in yellow will be uh, clad in the uh, plaster, basically a stucco similar to uh, matching what is used elsewhere in the pavilion. South elevation. Uh, the code requires guardrails on all roofs over a certain height. Uh, we constructed the mock-ups as discontinuous bands, but they will be continuous. So now we'll get to views of this equipment. This is a photo collage of the north side showing the equipment and the rooftop guardrail drawn in. This is the same view with the equipment mock-ups when the trees do not have leaves. This is a slightly different view when the trees have leaves. And that view with the mock-ups. So this is now on the south side, a collage with the equipment in gray. Mock-ups from the same view. This is a photo collage of the larger facade, the equipment, and photos of the mock-ups from this location. So we took photos of the other locations on the site where the mock-ups were visible. Uh, from this spot in the upper promenade, the equipment on the north side will be visible through the waiting room. Uh, from this spot at the boardwalk, the top of the equipment will be visible. Now you can see it in the center of that photo. Rooftop railings will be visible against the sky. And on the very far left in this photo, you can see equipment will be visible from this spot on the boardwalk. And again, the rooftop guardrail. Uh, lightning protection has been requested for the project. This will require rods that are about a foot long be mounted around the perimeter of the highest roofs about every 20 feet and there will also be copper down conductors from the roofs to the ground placed around the building. So this protects the building from damage during lightning strikes, of course. So that completes the presentation. Uh, we appreciate your, your attention. Thank Welcome. Thank your you. Comments. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions at this time? Yes, Commissioner Devonshire, please go ahead. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, there, there was mention of, uh, I believe it was concession counters that are now clad with terracotta, 100% replacement with terrazzo. Can you justify that, please? Um, there's nothing existing there now. The, the glazed terracotta counters have been completely removed. Um, mm -hmm. previous to our involvement. And based on how the terracotta has stood up on site, in, um, we believe that the terrazzo will hold up better in this area where there's going to be a lot of, you know, kicking and activity and things like that. So it's a durability issue. And if it does get damaged, if it, if it was glazed terracotta and a piece did get damaged, it would be very difficult for parks to replace it in kind. So whereas a terrazzo tile could be replaced, you know, within parks, parks you, own. You wouldn't get attic stock of the terracotta that you could use to replace? That's a possibility, yeah. I mean, it does require custom molds and things like that. So it's just, a, it is a cost concern for, for a public project, but. So it's cost, not authenticity that's driving that. Well, cost durability as well. I mean, the, the state of the pavilion now, we, we are taking that into account with what we're providing in the future, uh, looking at what has survived the best. And the terrazzo on site is in, is in the best shape. So, but thank you, that's, that's a good comment. 
Okay, Commissioner Chapin. Thank you uh, for a very uh, concise presentation with so much to go over. That was much appreciated. Uh, I'm curious about, I just wanted to ask about the uh, fixture on page 53, which looked like a, it was a really interesting historic fixture. Uh, you're going to try to replace that as closely as possible, or it says interpretation of historic design. It was a little unclear what it's going to look like. And do you know anything about the history of that fixture? It's just quite unusual. Uh, sorry, Andrew, it's can you bring up which one is that? Is that the globe or is that the cylinder? Uh, that's the, it's not the pendant ones later. It's the uh, globe, I'd call it. It looks right. sort of like a, an atom or something. Yeah, there it is. Right, so we have a historic photo on the right, which shows that what was in the drawings was actually mm -hmm. constructed. So our intention is to, to rebuild this as, as is shown in the historic drawing. Um, it is a oh. pretty great picture. <laughs> yeah, great, thank you. I'm, I, I'm glad that you're going to do that. Appreciate that, thank you. All right, Commissioner Goldblum. Michael, did, did you have a question? There we go, sorry. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to understand if, if there are any uh, other options for the mass of equipment that's visible from the entrance on the left side. Uh, I'm, I guess, I'm not sure which direction that is, <coughs> north? Yeah, that's the north side. <laughs> right, um, it struck me that that was you know, not the elevator bulkhead, but the um, the other equipment seemed very visible. And if, 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 if would it be possible to place some of that equipment kind of in the uh, the roof over the uh, offices and storage that exists in between the loggia and the uh, uh, front building? It looks like there's a kind of a lower roof there. That's actually between the roof. And the loggia is actually a ramp. It's it's access, it's oh, okay. historic access from the waiting room down to the yards, which used to have bathhouses. Um, so we don't want to block that in terms, if in case Parks ever wants to open that back up to public access, we prefer to. Can, keep any, it. can any of this be put on the landscape to the left? No. Well, the thing is that that equipment is all. Um, the, the large equipment on the that you're looking at the north wing there is all providing duct work for ventilation down below. So we need to have a path for duct work to go into the building um, for ventilation. Right. So we did look at, we, <laughs> we've been working on the project for a long time and, and did look at many other you know, possibilities. And, and honestly, just for the feasibility of the mechanical design, this, this is, uh, what was required because of the, the code requirements for mechanical ventilation. That, that's what we're getting with this equipment. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner Jefferson. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, it's a very well thought through design. I have two questions. One has to do with the insistent uh, sy sy symmetry of the project and why did you decide to just have why don't you just do two ramps instead of a ramp and a stair? And why not just keep that wonderful symmetry in that sense? Question one. And two, the mechanical units, I mean, uh, could, could they not be buried or, I mean, they're so insistent. They're so, they, they but anyway, answer question one first. Uh, Okay. In terms of the symmetry, um, you know, on the beach side of the pavilion, there's a significant grade change from the upper promenade down to the, the lower plaza. So any ramp we provide there is going to be large. It's going to be a significant <laughs> new object. It's going to be clearly new. Uh, so we propose that it's actually preferable to provide this new item just a single one and without detracting. And we don't think that it detracts from the historic building symmetry. The historic symmetry is still there. The new element um, is provided just where it's needed. And oh, I would add I, that- 
Go ahead. I think the ramp is beautiful. I think the ramp is quite lovely and it's, it, it works very well. So I can understand. I, I, I hear what you said. And, and just in terms of the, the rooftop equipment, trying to put it down lower, the site has a significant flood threat. So really those roofs are one of the reasons the equipment is at that. The, one of the main reasons is to keep it above the design flood elevation. If we put any equipment um, in the ground level, it, it would be damaged in a flood in the future. So that's a, a concern. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, just to follow up on Commissioner Goldblum's comment, uh, and he's absolutely correct. Uh, I know you look at possibilities and following Commissioner Jefferson's comment as well. It, it is a large amount of equipment that's highly visible. It, in your exploration of the uh, alternatives, uh, was screening ever discussed, whether a buffer or some sort of screen that can really uh, sort of camouflage or hide the equipment? We did discuss that, um, and in, including with staff level at LPC, and the feeling was that the screen would become an architectural element and become, you know, more of a, a volume, an architectural volume, and would start competing with the building itself, opposed to just reading it as individual pieces of equipment. But a screen could be possible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other questions, commissioners? Okay, I think we uh, don't have any other questions at this time. So I think we'll move to public testimony and we may have more questions after that. So um, if you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And we will start with anyone who signed up in advance and then get to everyone else. So I will turn it over to our executive director, Lisa Kersavich, to take us through the testimony. Okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna start with Barbara Delensic. And Barbara brought you in. And you just need to unmute yourself and turn on your camera if you choose. Okay, okay. Um, hello, um, as an, my name is Barbara Delensek. I'm an officer of both the City Island Historical Society and the Friends of Pelham Bay Park. Um, first of all, I want to say that I believe that the design team has done a, a fabulous, ex excellent job in respecting the historic integrity of the Orchard Beach Pavilion and Bathhouse and in adding practical modern elements that will improve access. Um, in 2011, the City Island Nautical Museum, which is administered by the Historical Society, presented an exhibition curated by historian and curator Deborah Wy, celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Art Deco Pavilion designed by Amar Every II, then consulting architect for the Parks Department. The exhibition and Mrs. Wise's lecture on the subject traveled to other organizations, and we like to think that this was instrumental in bringing the issue of restoration to public attention. Since then, our elected officials have been incredibly supportive in providing funds to see the project through the study and design process, reflecting the kind of political cooperation between Robert Moses, Fiorello LaGuardia, and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt that made the project possible in the first place. Unfortunately, Deborah Y is not able to attend the hearing today, but she has passed along to me her questions and comments, many of which I myself share. The most significant issue we feel is that of the ramp on the beach side of the pavilion, which Mr. Jefferson pointed out creates an uncharacteristic asymmetry that is quite at odds with Embry's original plan. Access is definitely important, but so is symmetry, a basic design element in our deco design. We don't, of course, advocate for the removal of the ramp, but we would like to ask if having ramps on both sides would be possible. Not only would the original symmetry be restored, but it would give both able and disabled visitors the option to choose one side or the other. Um, a question 
Are the openings on the ramp necessary for water to flow through? If openings aren't required, perhaps the wall of the ramp could be designed in a way that is more sympathetic to the wall for the stairs. Uh, the design for the mall seems to include ramps, but these aren't clear in the image. Uh, a comparison with existing configuration would be helpful, as would a straight on rendering of the reduced staircase. Also on the mall side at the left, a lot of equipment is to put, be put on the roof of the building to the left of the north waiting room. Needless to say, we hope the color and materials will not be too distracting and that when the trees are full, they will block a lot of the equipment. Would it also be possible to push the rooftop guardrails back so they are somewhat less visible? Um, some details are not mentioned in the presentation, specifically the portholes, the sunburst detail, and the stairwell tiling. Can we assume that these will be restored as originally designed? Having asked these various questions, let me close by simply saying that the care with which the designers studied the original structure and its details is admirable and of exceptionally high quality. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, and next we have Lynn Funk. Lynn, you just need to unmute yourself. Lynn, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Right. There we go. OK, so it's not letting me share the screen. I'm trying to. You cannot screen share while the other participant is sharing. You could turn on your camera so we can see you. Um, but we don't have screen sharing. OK, I see. Thank you. Uh, I'm Lynn Funk from the Victorian Society, and I'm starting my video. Thank you. Um, let's see if it'll come up. I just shared it. Uh, maybe I should, let's see. So, so Lynn, we don't Lynn, have, uh, you can't, uh, you can't share your screen. So it's, um, this is just public testimony. And um, if you can, you have three minutes, if you can summarize the comments and explain what you would have seen in the screen, that would be helpful. Okay, I will just read it then, thank you. Victorian Society is very pleased that this highly important historic public work will be receiving much needed restoration. We hope that the city will provide maintenance and operation budget required to prevent the restored facility from falling into disrepair and decay. The proposed work in general is sensitive to the historic design, but we find two serious flaws and several smaller disappointments that could be easily remedied. Our two first concerns are the vast scope of the disorganized and highly visible rooftop mechanical additions from the land side and the large ramp on the beach. On the vast side, it would be helpful if there were more visually appropriate and feasible places for the mechanical equipment. Uh, one suggestion is to use the seemingly disused ramps and the former air changing yards but i know that was mentioned uh, with the flood problems if it must remain on top of the building this may be a case where design screening can help retain the symmetry the beachside ramp while carefully designed is enormous and wreaks havoc with the pavilion's design and symmetry a critical co constituent uh, to the success of the style of architecture. There are other accessible routes between levels, including an ele uh, elevator. Other aspects of the design, which we believe could be approved, raising the pavilion's parapet with masonry affects its original position and blocks low um, views from the lower uh, and upper terrace to the beach. A slender pipe rail would be better. The pavilion storefront infill should include the historic original subdivisions. The egress doors and transoms flanking the storefront should be glazed, even if they have to be back painted. Uh, going on briefly, this ca storefront canopy light should be restored to the original design rather than being recessed so to give punctuation to this side of the building. Security gates at the storefront should be on the interior. 
the triangular pattern dado under the concession counters, even if not restored to original terracotta, should mimic the original material with solid gray and green pattern rather than the blue pattern. All lampposts within the pro project area should be restored if historic, if not replaced with replicas and fitted with appropriate luminaires. While restoration of the compass rose pavement is commendable, the original short-lived but wonderful tiered fountain in the location was far superior and we urge its reconstruction. Exposed surface conduit should be avoided. As a historic structure, the pavilion can receive an exemption from energy code. If features are inappropriate, the code should not be used to justify these features as in slide 63. Finally, we are curious how the new flood mitigation rules are being incorporated and we would hope that the Parks Department search this collection of objects for original light fixtures and other features that have been removed but could be restored and reinstalled or replicated. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next we have um, Milka Martel. Okay, Nilka. How are you? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nilka Martell and I am the president of the Friends of Pelham Bay Park. On April 15th, 2021, Marvel Architects presented before the Community Board, Community Board 10 in the Bronx. Uh, most of our members uh, attended that meeting. Orchard Beach is known as the Riviera of New York City and it is the only public beach in the Bronx. It is visited by 1.7 million beach users every summer season. More importantly, it serves many low income communities of the Bronx, families and individuals who cannot afford or are not able to visit beaches further out in Long Island or New Jersey. The Orchard Beach Pavilion is not only an iconic landmark, it is perhaps the most special place in the hearts of all Bronx sites. We believe that Marvel, the Marvel Architect Team, EDC and New York City Parks have done a great job on this historic reconstruction. The design is sensitive to the historic nature of the building while meeting the needs of today's Bronx sites. The beach provides a peaceful getaway for many Bronx families, the majority who arrive using public transportation. During my lifetime, the pavilion building has been closed to the public, scaffold and left to decay. Our beach was left in the sorry state while other beaches in New York City have seen a resurgence with upgrades to their facilities. Think of Coney Island and the Rockaways. This reconstruction will allow public access for the first time in decades and make Orchard Beach a destination. The restored pavilion will activate an underutilized landmark building, creating job opportunities and develop a truly wonderful amenity for the Bronx community. Most visitors to Orchard Beach spend a large part of their day there and would welcome a sit down restaurant, varied food concessions, interesting shops, and public programming and activities that would enhance their experience, making the Orchard Beach Pavilion not just a destination for beachgoers, but for fun family outings or evening entertainment with friends. We are truly excited for the day when the building is fully restored and open to the public, especially the accessible connections from the land side of the building to the beach side. The restoration of the pavilion has received vast support from the everyday beachgoers, as well as local Bronx elected officials past and present, as well as all 12 Bronx community boards, Mayor de Blasio, Governor Cuomo, and our own Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz Jr., who spearheaded interest in funding this project. Preservation groups, business organizations, park advocacy groups, and local civic organizations all welcome the restoration of the pavilion. The people of the Bronx deserve an updated, usable public space at Orchard Beach that is accessible to everyone, which reflects the past and looks to the future. We look forward to seeing people using the pavilion again, bringing back life to this beautiful and historic structure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and finally we have Simeon Bankoff.
Hi everyone. Hi, this is Diego Roballo. I logged in on my boss Zoom accounts. That's why it's displaying Simeon Bankov. But my name is Diego Roballo and I work for the Historic Districts Council. HDC uploads this application, which is a sensitive, thoughtful, and remarkable restoration of the Orca Beach site. Despite being a victim of decades of deferred maintenance, Orca Beach remains a high volume summer destination for Bronx residents and Upper Manhattan residents. That people still come here in its state of neglect demonstrates the inherent success of the original design and location. The people who come here deserve this restoration and this project will elevate the entire borough of the Bronx. We cannot wait to see people in these spaces and for this architecture to become activated and newly accessible to everyone. Because of the tremendous attention to detail throughout this, this application, our committee wondered why the canopied storefronts on page 47 do not entirely follow the historic drawings, specifically the loss of uh, horizontal framing members. Since most components of this project closely replicate the documented historic conditions, we are curious why that did not, did not occur here. That said, we did not find the proposed storefronts to be inappropriate. HTC understands that to make this complex usable again, substantial HVAC systems must be introduced. We appreciate the study of user experience time in the, in the drop-off area versus the beach area. However, we hope that further study of the visibility of the rooftop mechanicals can be explored to the reuse, to reduce and or relocate them. In a similar vein, we felt that the exposed HVAC systems in the newly enclosed north waiting room appears a bit haphazard and intrusive in this space. Overall, this is a spectacular project and will allow one of the gems of the Bronx to once again shine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I don't see any other hands raised and there's nobody else signed up. Thank you. And uh, Rich, I know we received the community board resolution. Did we receive any other written testimony? Uh, no other written testimony, but yes, the community board did recommend approval. Okay, great, thank you. All right, I'd like to turn back to the applicants and ask if you would like to respond to any of the issues raised in the testimony. Um, some of the questions had to do with the symmetry of the ramp or and the question of whether two ramps um, or whether the wall of the ramp uh, could be restudied. And then there were also you know, comments about the visibility of the mechanical additions and the railing, um, and then some comments as well about the storefront infill. So if there's any of those items that you'd like to respond to, please go ahead. Um, I can touch on a few of them. Uh I did already touch a little bit on the, the symmetry, just our, our thinking about that, that it's a new element. Just in terms of the construction, um, we did feel that having it open and sort of reflective of the loggia was desirable opposed to having it read as a mass. You know, the stair volume was smaller, so it made sense yeah. to us. Um, and just one more thing on the mechanical equipment. I think I maybe I did say that Right, this is a seasonal facility and especially on the left side we do have a whole wall of trees so during the summer those are deciduous trees so it will be i think you saw that in the in the mock-up photos it will be um primarily blocked when the site is used primarily um, by these trees and um, the railings are already pushed back six feet which is the maximum allowed from um by code for that. And um, the last thing was just about the storefront. I can touch on that. So the original storefront had very small members, you know, extrusions of maybe one and a half by one and a half inches. So it was very lightweight looking. And um, we do have to comply with local law 86 here. So we are concerned with thermal performance and just it's something we should all be concerned with anyway. And so we will be looking at a more standard aluminum storefront system. So it was our feeling that adding additional horizontals was actually gonna make it look heavier, which wasn't in keeping with the original lightweight design. Um, that was our, our thinking with the storefront. 
Um, okay. Thank you. Commissioners, do we have any other questions? Okay, I'm going to start to request to unmute you. So just look for that and uh, we'll move to close the hearing and have our discussion. So Commissioner Gustafson, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Devonshire, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. And I have to just start by saying I uh, toured the site about 10 years ago because the the structure was in such deteriorated condition and there was great concern about how to address it. And I know that many people, um, some have been mentioned in testimony, have worked very hard to uh, come up with a plan here. And I wanna just applaud the Parks Department and EDC for really stepping up and figuring out a plan to reactivate, reuse, and restore the building. So I'm delighted to see this plan for a restoration and to see this important landmark reactivated. And it, when any landmark is um, made useful to the public after, especially after a period of time where it hasn't been used, there are changes that come along with that restoration and those changes usually have to do with code and accessibility and resiliency as we're seeing here. So we are looking at some modifications today that go hand in hand with the restoration work that will um, functionally make this successful and address those issues of accessibility and resiliency. So um, as, there are, you know, as we've heard, there are many components to this project. And as we have our, our discussion, I think we should all try to cover as many of them as possible. So um, that includes the ramps, uh, the parapet height on the pavilion, the installation of new light fixtures, the installation of storefronts and glass partitions, and um, signage and the installation of HVAC equipment, rooftop bulkheads and railings and lightning rods. So um, lots of uh, re really functional things that need to be addressed. And we often find, we always find ways to address um, these kinds of needs in, uh, in plans. And this is an especially important one. So I, I know that we'll have a good discussion that will get us there in the end. So I'd like to, Go ahead and start with our Bronx Commissioner, Commissioner Goldman. Would you like to lead on this one? Sure. Um, I mean, there, there are very few kind of buildings that make me want to cry. <laughs> you know, that of, like at the end of a really good movie, you know, a really, really good movie. <clears throat> and this, this type, this era, this particular kind of building, I look at it, I feel like I want to like, it's at the end of a really good movie. <laughs> so ennobling, so uh, regal, so the spirit of it is so, it just, it just makes you want to, you know, have a march on, on July 4th. It's just so wonderful. And the fact that it sat abandoned for so long, it was so sad. And it was such a kind of legacy of, of neglect and a way that the Bronx, as one of the uh, testifiers uh, said, you know, it's like a symbol of, of being the, the, the uh, neglected borough, which uh, I'm sure every borough thinks that they're in a neglected borough. But um, I think that this, this was particularly sad and considering how noble and glorious and celebratory and democratic a place this was and is. Um, and I think that in general, the, the um, proposal put forth is totally and completely appropriate and wonderful and, and desperately needed and will be will be deeply valued by thousands and thousands of New Yorkers uh, into them into the minutia uh, I think that the um, uh, modifications to the uh, the insertion of the ramps on the on the city side are to and modification of grade is totally appropriate um, it was very, very subtly done, um, and I don't believe it will constitute a significant um, 
experiential change to the building. Um, I think that the uh, signage uh, along the, the um, entry side is, is, is uh, toned down and subsidiary to the building and, and appropriate. Um, I think that the, uh, ins the insertion of um, uh, uh, pavers and, uh, and, and scoring of expansion joints and the plaster and all the kind of restoration stuff on the interior and on the surface of the exterior is, is, is uh, totally appropriate, appropriate and, and subtle and, and uh, reasonable. Um, uh, the reduction of the planters also is fine. Um, the insertion of the ramp on the beach side, I think is very creative and beautiful. And even though it, it is not perhaps the most, um, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't maintain the symmetry, but I think it does maintain the materiality of the, of the other stair. And as an aesthetic approach, I think it's an appropriate approach, even though it doesn't maintain the pure symmetry. And so therefore I think it, it's an appropriate gesture even despite the, the asymmetry of it. And I think that the design of the base of the, of the ramp is, is very, a very beautiful interpretation of the um, arcaded uh, uh, ground level uh, design uh, and will be actually quite lovely. Um, I, I think that the, um, um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, the insertion of glass and, and storefronts um, is subtle and appropriate. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, uh, subsidiary to the overall building. <laughs> um, um, I kind of wish that they had, they had put a, uh, tried to recall the, the mullion pattern in the, in, the, um, in the storefronts that one sees on page 48. <laughs> um, I may have missed it if there was a strong reason not to do that, but I think that, that pattern could perhaps be recalled uh, in consultation with staff. Um, I think that the restoration and recreation of lighting fixtures is fantastic. I think that the um, insertion of glass where there wasn't glass before was done in a subtle way. Um, cutting to the chase, the, uh, I think that the air conditioner equipment on the North building is, uh, is does in this particular case warrant the consideration of a screen uh, that would be as low as possible, uh, set, set as low as, as it could be to mask the air conditioning units, not worrying about the bulkhead. But I think that um, it does, even, you know, in the, in the images pre presented, it is a very visible, distinctive um, set of equipment on, on, on the building. And I think that, that the um, asymmetry of a screen would be preferable to the cacophony of the current um, array of machinery if it can't be found, if there can't be found another way to do it. And again, I think that's totally a staff can work with the applicant on that. And I would just, I didn't notice any details of the railings. I would just ask that the applicant work with staff to make sure that the railings are as skinny and <laughs> minimally visible as possible in the, um, photo montages, they were rather visible. And for a building of this scale, I'm sure we can figure out a way to do railings that would be relatively invisible from uh, the normal distance viewing. But thank you very much to the Parks Department, to Marvel, and uh, more power to you. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner Devonshire. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, I, I am guilty of having cursed parks when I visited this site 10 years ago as well. Uh, I, I, I almost wanted to cry because it seemed like this, it seemed so unfair that this thing was falling into the ground. Um, it's such a beautiful thing. It, it's always actually reminded me of the Piazza della Repubblica in Rome. It's such a grand sweep. Um, in any case, I, I you know, in, in general, I think this is a, a very, very well thought out design. Um, I was surprised that, that Martha didn't mention in the beginning that the, the trees are going to hide all of that equipment when people are actually using this thing. And, and so I'm, I'm really not all that concerned about that. 
the um, the approach is is the approach that I would hope. I mean, this is a difficult thing because this is an individual landmark, but there's so many components involved here that it's it's difficult to to judge it the way you would do a, a normal building. I think the the light hand has been shown where they did only one ramp. They could have knocked out both stairs and and taken that, you know, we're the architects, this is our masterpiece approach. But no, they took the light approach and put in a ramp because we need a ramp and left the original material there with the other stair. Um, I, I think as I, as I mentioned before, my, my one sort of disappointment is the, the changing out of, of the terracotta at the, at the counters. Um, you know, this terracotta in 1934 was not the same terracotta that we're making now. This, the fabrication standards are, are much different. I don't think we'll ever have the issues that we had with terracotta. You know, they didn't even have fabrication standards until the, the end of the 20s. And, and so uh, my wish would be that they would rethink those counters and, and put glazed terracotta tiles back on there. But you know, that's, that's minor compared to um, this glorious approach to this really amazing site. Great, all right, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, I want to echo the two Michaels in the admiration to, uh, to what the city and the parks department and the architect is doing there. Um, and uh, just to follow up on Martha's uh, reminder, yes, I did indeed see the uh, landscaping earlier. And I, I, to Michael Goldblum's comment, I think um, that will be for the staff and, uh, for, and the parks department to work out whether where the buffer is needed because um, you did remind me of the, the, the screen and Commissioner Devonshire just reminded us that most people are busy looking at the beach. Um, and, uh, and, and I do um, to having this thing fully restored because my, I, my best friend got married in front of this building at the beach many years ago. And, uh, and um, uh, that marriage did not work out well, but the building did. <laughs> <laughs> I think this thing being fully restored. Maybe he has a second chance, another marriage in front of this building again. <laughs> All right, thank you. Commissioner uh, Bland? You know, Sarah, I came in late. I didn't hear enough of it to, to really uh, not validate. Okay, it, so. that's fine. I, I knew that you came a little late. Okay, Commissioner Lutfi. Commissioner Lutfi? Okay, I think we may have lost her for a moment. So Commissioner Jefferson. Um, the beauty of this building has to do with the symmetry. It, 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 the symmetry is what makes it so beautiful. And, and to, 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 to become practical and say a stair uh, is okay on one side and a ramp on the other, it, 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 destroys this, this, this elemental quality of this building, its symmetry. Second, the issue of the, uh, of the mechanical systems, I think there's a way of handling that if they thought of it in terms of each one having, having the same proportion and spaced, spaced uh, a consistent spacing. So it looked like an object on the roof rather than each one having its own size just brought from the manufacturer and placed okay. on top. So if they thought of it as, as a kind of uh, abstract modern way of placing them to look like- Kevin, you're going to have to get Evie at the bus stop first and then go get them. Okay. Uh, 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 to, to place as objects on a roof in a modernist way would, would be fine. And in the winter, there isn't any leaves on the trees. And when you go there, you will see all this haphazard stuff on the roof. So I think for this beautiful symmetrical building, care has to be taken. Right now it's a B plus and it could become an A, a wonderful A. And one of the other issues I have is the exposed conduit, which I, you know, I see in all the buildings we have done for the city. If they could cover it, just put a, 
uh, a sheetrock um, throwing strip and put a ceiling on it and cover the because it always feels to me when you have exposed conduit that you didn't care. I mean, that's my feeling. Um, and uh, with particular security, security gates should be inside the space, not outside. And if you look at page 34 and 35, and it's the truth. This is what I call a really, really beautiful sinewy wrap. It's gorgeous. And I, I think they should reproduce it. Thank you. That's it. So just, just to be clear, I think, are you saying that they should do two ramps on this side? I, I, I think, but yes, I think because the okay. symmetry is consistent. You see the difference in this image, you know. I mean, this. Okay. You know. okay. Commissioner Gustafson? Uh, just uh, not not much to add here. I agree with uh, Commissioner Goldblum in um, every respect. Um, I do want to reiterate uh, uh, gratitude to uh, uh, to Martha Bush for the efficiency of this presentation. I thought it was uh, it was this is a really tough one to do in a in in a single day, and uh, and and she did it in like thirty minutes. It's a ter terrific and on point, and the materials are fantastic. Um, uh, number two is that um, while the rooftop equipment is something that is of some um, uh, concern, I do think it's going to be um, largely uh, it's largely going to disappear. But they can work with staff to figure out if there are any um, ways in which they can tweak that to make it uh, uh, less apparent. Whatever the solution might be, um, I appreciate the concern for consistency because this is a, um, a a structure that you know relies on symmetry and formality. Um, um, however, um, you know, I think that the, um, they would, the, 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 the ramp they did create is terrific. And I, and I think that, uh, uh, when the people are there, that's going to be virtually unnoticed, uh, the, the lack of symmetry there. And then finally, I, I am ever so grateful that much as I love the parks department, Maple Leaf, that they took those, um, the, the huge ones down. I am, I'm hoping that whatever signage is going to replace it is going to be, um, more in keeping with the structure and less in keeping with the ego of the department. Okay. Commissioner Shamir Barron. Um, I, I agree with nearly every point that's been made, um, especially how beautiful these buildings are, how, how sad and unfair it is that they haven't been taken care of all these years, how wonderful it is that it's happening now. Um, I think that had the applicant come in and propose to enclose the um, the mechanical equipment in these kind of recessed envelopes of some kind, bars set back, um, you know, we may have all had problems with it. You know, which what is what looks whether or not it looks too much like it wants to be like as though it was almost there, always there. But I actually think that that would be. A better approach, even though clearly um, these mechanical the equipment, mechanical equipment will be concealed during the summer months. I still think that they should be contained in some other kind of enclosure that makes a, for a kind of a consistent height rather than a whole bunch of different pieces. And so I agree with uh, Commissioner uh, Jefferson in this regard. And I have to say, I, um, I I'm sort of on the fence around. I, I sort of agree with Commissioner Jefferson about the about the kind of the symmetry and wanting this additional ramp um, for the sake of consistency here with the with the original party program. And, um, but on the other hand, it feels just a little bit, um, I don't know, it feels like a, like an approach that's, uh, that's has a certain strange kind of redundancy, even so even though the whole program is really built on the symmetry. So I, I don't know, I'm a little conflicted about that. But um, but hope, hope they might be able to, I, and I can see working with staff and close the, um, the mechanical uh, equipment. Okay. All right, and uh, Commissioner Holford smith Well, I agree with um, pretty much everything that's been said so far. It's such a fantastic project to bring this, this beautiful building back to life again. Um, I'd have almost no, no comments about it. I think that the, 
having the asymmetry of the ramp and the stair, I think that's appropriate because I think we should be maintaining as much historic fabric as possible. That was the original yeah. layout. And I think providing the ramp, it's a beautiful design, but I think it should be just its own thing. And then we should keep the stair um, as the original design, okay. even though it does violate the symmetry. I think I'm less concerned with than others about the mechanical equipment. I think that, you know, you're probably going to walk right past that and not really notice it, but I think working with staff, they could de design some kind of a screen that would be fine. And I agree with uh, Commissioner Devonshire about the concession stand, the, that terrazzo uh, tile is too heavily patterned. It should much, I think much more closely match what was there in the, you know, in the black and white photos, it looks like solid, solid triangles. But that's a staff level. Okay. okay, Commissioner Chapin. Yeah, uh, this is um, overall a great restoration project for a facility that has languished for so long. So it's just terrific to see it. Uh, my experience at parks taught me that there's nothing more important to a park or park facility uh, to its continued health than ensuring active positive uses. Reopening this building and providing additions like air conditioning and heating and concession facilities and accessibility changes which will expand its potential uses and periods of use is incredibly important, not only to the community, but also to the future condition of this structure. It's unfortunate these uses are requiring so much rooftop equipment that is so prominent and visible, but I, I agree that uh, a generalized screening could potentially compete with historic architecture. Possibly grouping some, uh, some of these elements might make them a little less intrusive. Fortunately, as shown in some of the views, natural vegetation screening uh, will obscure much of the equipment during most of the year, I think. I also believe that while the ramp is graceful, including a second one for symmetry would create the illusion that it was part of the original architecture. So I do not think there should be an additional ramp. With regard to other design details, I agree with Commissioner Goldblum's remarks and support the construction of accessible ramps the regrading of the entrance plaza. I found that the signage was restrained and appropriate, both that for the parks department and the concessions. And I think the restoration of the concession area and loggia counters is both appropriate and necessary. And I found the glass partitions in addition of glass appropriate. And the replication of the historic light fixtures I think is very well done. Hearing Michael Devonshire's thoughts about the terracotta, terracotta, I would also ask that they consider the possibility of uh, looking at that again to see whether they uh, could utilize uh, terracotta as a durable alternative. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so I think we all agree this is a fantastic project. Um, again, thank, thank you to the Parks Department and EDC and Thank you to Jonathan and Martha for a great presentation. And um, there were many, many components here and you very succinctly walked us through them. And I think um, it benefited the discussion greatly. And so we've had a very good discussion. I think we are poised to make a motion to recommend approval, to make a motion to approve it today. And um, it, I think we'll just ask you to continue to work with the staff to um, explore ways to continue to either mask or minimize the appearance of the HVAC equipment and railings um, to, and to um, look at the details and materiality of the loggia counters. And I think that covers it. And I think we have uh, support for it with you continuing to work with the staff on those two areas. So Commissioner Goldblum, do you think you can make that motion? We'll sort of leave it general, okay. Uh, regarding math house and promenade individual landmark, um, a modern classical style waterfront recreation complex with Beaux Arts elements designed by Amar Embry II and landscape architects Gilmore D. Clark and Michael Rapuano, built in 1934 through 1937. The application is to construct barrier free access ramps in a bulkhead, enclose a covered pavilion, replace stairs and guardrails, modify masonry openings and paving regrade a plaza, install infill, partitions, signage, mechanical equipment, railings, and light fixture. <clears throat> um, I recommend approval, finding that in conjunction with the restoration of the complex, 
The proposed alterations will help to return public access to this remarkable individual landmark and recreate, reactivate the complex without eliminating or damaging any significant architectural features of the construction of the ramps, regrading of the entrance plaza, modifications to the size of the planting beds at the viewing terrace will help improve circulation and barrier-free access while maintaining overall ceremonial ordering of the historic pedestrian circulation, that the materials and finishes of the ramps will match the materials and finishes at adjoining portions of the complex, that the construction of the paired ramps and associated modifications to the entrance plaza and stairs will form a unified composition which will maintain the base of organization, symmetry, and formality of this historic entrance, that the curving switchback footprint and supporting arches of the single east beach side ramp will be evocative of the curving forms throughout the complex, minimize obstructions to views of lower, of lower loggia, and create a sense of lightness, which will help the ramp maintain a subordinate presence. That within the context of the monumental complex, the replacement of the stairs at only one side of the viewing terrace with a ramp will not diminish the overall sense of symmetry of the complex. That the simple detailing of the beachside ramp and railings will be comparable, compatible with the modern classical style of the complex. And that the increase in height of the parapet joining the viewing terrace, the increase in height and framing elements at the upper loggia railings and the replacement of single globe lampposts with double globe lampposts will be discrete modifications that will help address safety hazards. That the proposed storefronts will closely replicate the historic infill in terms of materials, predominance, glazing, and simplicity of detailing, and its rectilinear pattern will be in keeping with the historic grid pattern. <clears> that the exterior roll gate housing beneath the canopy will be simply designed, paired, painted to blend with its context and discrete placement. That the design of lower loggia counters will <coughs> closely <coughs> will uh, will closely replicate the historic counters with minor adjustments to create barrier-free access. That the terrazzo cladding at the counters will that the cladding at the counters will recall the historic terracotta in appearance. Um, that raising of the ceiling at the lower loggia will help facilitate maintenance without detracting from the overall composition of the loggia. That the proposed glass partitions at the, and vestibule at the inboard side of the unglazed openings at the waiting pavilion will be a discrete presence when seen from the outside the pavilion. That within the pavilion, minimal framing and simple detailing of the partitions and vestibule will help support the primacy of the historic elements. That the louver and ductwork within the pavilion will be simply detailed, painted to blend with their context and installed at plain masonry, helping them to remain a subordinate presence that all of the proposed light fixtures throughout the complex will either closely recall the historic fixtures oh, um, all right, or be simply designed and well scaled to their context <clears throat> that the expansion joints at the plain cement plaster at the upper loggias will address the existing disrepair and be largely screened and viewed by the columns, that the signage will be simply designed well integrated into the overall design of the complex in terms of placement, number, and size, that the rooftop HVAC equipment will be installed at the least prominent rooftop locations at the complex and less visible alternative locations below the roof level are not available due to the risk of flooding, <clears throat> that the amount and size of the HVAC equipment will be commensurate with the size and functions of the complex of the elevator bulkhead and rooftop HVAC equipment, when seen from public areas, will be primarily seen against the background of taller and simply designed west facades of the, and of the loges, and will be seasonally screened from view by foliage of existing trees at the bulkhead. And uh, rooftop HVAC equipment will be simply designed and finished to blend with their context. The rooftop railing and light lightning conductors will be small in relation to the complex and feature simple designs and thin profiles, thereby helping them to receive from view and that the accumulative effect of the proposal will help restore the function comp of the complex and enhance the visitor's experience of this individual landmark. And the applicant will work with the staff to review the general comments made by the commissioners during the hearing uh, with a special focus on uh, HVAC visibility, um, uh, but not to exclude other issues that were raised in the hearing and to work with the staff to resolve them and improve them. Okay, right, thank you. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Devonshire, would you second that motion? Sorry, I second that. <laughs> okay, 
And Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Oh, is he, is he not here? Oh, no, he's here. Commissioner Bland, you're, you're on. I'm not <laughs> I wasn't here. You didn't come in. You, you, oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Commissioner Chapin, you're on mute. Sorry. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Uh, Commissioner Lutfi is not present. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Okay, with nine in favor and two not present, the motion carries. Okay, so that's approved. Thank you. Good luck. And we'll move to the next item. Thank you. The next is public hearing item number two, LPC 21-01563. An application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Queens, block 10309, lot 71, 114 07, 178 Street in the Addisley Park Historic District. This is a colonial revival style freestanding house designed by P. Marr and built in 1927 to 28. And the application is to replace windows. Okay, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing and the staff will be giving the presentation. Staff, you now have control over the, the presentation. Please state your name for the record and you may begin. Good afternoon, Commissioners, Sarah Camelotto's preservation staff. The item before you is for 11407 178th Street, a freestanding house located near the southeast corner of Murdoch Avenue and 178th Street in the Addisley Park Historic District. The application is to replace windows. This is the 1940s tax photo of the property showing the gable end of the house, which is one of the street facing primary facades. We have no clear historic images of the house, but from this image and research done on the property, it appears that the historic window configuration would have been six over six double hung windows. This is an existing condition photo of the property today. The following existing condition photographs document the replacement windows that exist at the property. The house currently displays a mix of one over one double hung windows at the front, side and partial rear facades and some single pane picture windows at select locations at the rear facade. All of the historic windows were replaced prior to the time of designation. These next two slides show the deteriorated condition of the replacement windows. The applicant is proposing to install all new windows at the property. The proposed material is a wood fiber composite with a white finish. The applicant is proposing to replace all of the windows at the primary facades and select windows at visible secondary facades with six over one simulated divided light double hung windows and to replace the remaining windows at the secondary facades with one over one double hung windows. The following images annotated with yellow X marks indicate the openings where the six over one windows will be installed there will be 10 six over one windows in total. All other windows will be one over one. Finally, these are two examples of windows of the proposed configuration and material from the manufacturer installed at another job site. The property owner is here to present some background and the appropriateness of the proposal and to answer any additional questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did the owner want to say anything at this time? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, good afternoon. Please state your name for the record and then please go ahead. Yes, my name is Joydeth Lacey Amos. Um, I'm a mother, a wife, and a New York City public school teacher. 
my husband and um, I, we bought this house last year in June, 2020. And um, it does need a lot of repairs. And we wanted to repair the windows um, first because we were concerned at the time about, you know, the winter months that we would be cold based on the current conditions of the windows. Um, so we actually went ahead and we ordered windows um, from this company. And then a few days after we realized that we needed permission um, in order to replace windows. Um, when we bought the house, we were told um, by the seller that it, we were in a historic district and we couldn't do any um, work on the front without permission. But we thought this, was, this had to do with the style of the house. And we weren't thinking that it had to do with things like windows. So um, I immediately contacted the company and told them that you know, we had to put a hold on the order because um, we needed permission. Um, however, like a few weeks after in late September, they contacted me again to schedule an installation date. And I'm like, we cannot install them because we need permission. Um, so that has been the journey <laughs> so far mm -hmm. in trying to um, get the approval. That's when it all started. I submitted the application in maybe early September and because I'm new, there are a lot of things I didn't know um, that I had to do. So it's been all this time that um, it has been going on. So I eagerly await your approval. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, do we have any questions? Commissioner Devonshire? Thanks. Joy Death, you promise to maintain these windows? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, other questions? Okay, I don't see any other questions at this time. So we'll move to public testimony and I'll turn it over to Lisa to, to walk us through the public testimony. And if you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. Lisa? Okay. Um, and as Sarah said, please do raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Um, let's see, we had, Evelyn and Collier, you signed up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assume you wanna speak. And Evelyn, I've brought you in. You would just need to unmute yourself. The project I'm speaking on is 121 McDonough Street. Oh, I apologize. I pulled up the wrong group. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, that's um, all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll mute, mute myself back. Okay, so with that, I, I apologize. There's okay. nobody here signed up to speak. Okay, and Rich, did we receive any written testimony? Yes, we received a letter from uh, Queens Community Board 12 and they recommended approval. Okay, thank you. All right, commissioners, any final comments? All right, so I'm going to now uh, start to unmute you all so we can close the hearing and begin our discussion. Commissioner Bland, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. Commissioner Goldblum, would you second that motion? Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. Um, and this is, as we've seen in the presentation, a building that historically had six over six double hung windows, but those windows have been replaced uh, a long time, uh, it seems, from their condition a long time ago, um, but clearly since the time of designation. And the proposal is, um, to uh, propose a window in a different configuration and material. Um, the configuration on the front facing windows and windows closer to the street would be a six over one and the windows at the back portions would be that are really obliquely and minimally visible and not visible would be one over one. Um, so I, you know, I think that's somewhat consistent with uh, proposals for windows where we've seen a change in configuration, but the primary windows are still consistent with the style <laughs> of the building. 
the change in material is also something before us. I think we've also entertained this material in other historic districts that have buildings that are well set back from the street uh, with a, a more um, suburban or f deeper front yards that uh, make it less perceptible. But we'll go ahead and have our discussion. Commissioner Devonshire, would you like to start this one? Sure, uh, nice house. I, I think, uh... You know, I'd like to see six over six, but I, I think the choice that they've made is appropriate. And I'm, I'm happy to see non-vinyl windows going into a, a building here. So they'll, if, uh, as Joy Death promised, um, we know where she lives, so, so she will be maintaining <laughs> these things. And uh, I, I think it's appropriate. Okay, thank you. Commissioner I'll be Chen? Checking on it. I'll be checking on it from time to time. <laughs> okay. Just to follow uh, Commissioner Devonshire that uh, we should do this quickly before the lady gets too cold this winter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Commissioner Bland? Yes, I think this is appropriate. Okay, Commissioner uh, Jefferson? I think this is appropriate. Okay, thank you. Commissioner uh, Gustafson? And now here's an applicant who's acting in good faith. I love it. She, she hears what she needs to do and she does it Right, doesn't make things up. I love it. I, I, it's appropriate. Fine, let's do it. Okay, Commissioner Holford Smith. Um, I agree, it's appropriate. Commissioner Chapin. Yeah, I agree, it's appropriate, and I, it's returning the house uh, more toward its uh, historic condition. And I want to thank the applicant, as uh, Commissioner Gustafson did, for having found out that she needed to follow the rules that she did so, because so often we find people that ignore things and, and proceed anyway. I'm sorry it took her this long, but uh, I'm, I congratulate her for doing the right thing and, and uh, you know, following Landmark's rules. That's very much appreciated. Thank you. Commissioner Goldblum. I agree, it's perfect. And Sarah, okay. I do All right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I think we be doing that today. <laughs> Commissioner Shamir Barron, go ahead. Appropriate. Great. And Commissioner Holford Smith, I think I skipped you as well. No, you got me. I thought it was appropriate. No, I got you. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My list is out of order. Okay. So I, uh, I think we have a consensus to approve. Commissioner Devonshire, would you go ahead and make the motion? With pleasure. In the matter of LPC 21015631407, 178th Street in the Addisley Park Historic District, an application to replace windows, I recommend approval, finding that the work will not damage or eliminate any significant architectural features. The replacement windows will match the historic windows in terms of double hung operation. The proposed six over one double hung window configuration of primary and secondary facades is characteristic of historic windows of buildings of this type, style, and age. The proposed one over one double hung window configuration of partially visible secondary facades will maintain the configuration found at the time of designation and in combination with the new six over six, six over one windows at primary facades will not detract from the character of the building. But the house is set back from the street, therefore the proposed Fibrex composite window material will be minimally perceptible from public thoroughfares. And the white window finish will be in keeping with the stark color palette found in this building. And the proposed work will not diminish the special architectural or historic character of the Addisley Park Historic District. Thank you. And Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Delighted to second it. Thank you. And Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. And Commissioner Luffy, I don't believe, is back yet. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Okay, with 10 in favor and none opposed and one not present, the motion carries. All right, so that's approved. Thank you. And we'll move to the, the next and final item on our agenda. Yes, and that is item number three, LPC 
05175, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn, block 1852, lot 54, 121 McDonough Street in the Stuyvesant Heights Historic District. This is an Italianate style row house built in 1872, and the application is to construct a rear yard addition. Okay, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Um, staff will be presenting the application. Staff, you now have control over the presentation. Please state your name for the record and you may begin. Good afternoon, commissioners. Dina Posner from the preservation staff and I'll be presenting this application for 121 McDonough Street. The applicant is also present to answer any questions. The scope of the application is to construct a three-story rear yard addition. This map and these site plans show the context of the property and the condition of the site. The row house is located within the Stuyvesant Heights Historic District between Tompkins Avenue and Throop Avenue. The photos in the upper left show the existing condition at the front facade and the bottom right shows the 1940s tax photo. There is no work proposed at the front facade. The photo in the upper right shows the existing condition at the rear facade. And this is an enlarged view of the rear facade. The existing two-story L seen here is proposed to be removed to make way for the proposed three-story addition. This section shows a comparison of the existing rear L with the proposed addition. The proposed addition will protrude into the rear yard approximately two and a half feet less than the existing L. This block plan shows the other existing extensions of the block the other extensions are a mix of one story and two story. These photos show the visibility of the rear facade from Throop Avenue. 121 McDonough Street is the white facade seen here. And an additional view of the rear facade from Throop Avenue. Uh, these photos have been annotated to show the general massing of the addition as seen from various points along Throop Avenue. These photos show views of the block interior from 121 McDonough Street. While the previous mock-up shown here uh, was built taller, the current proposed addition will only be 32 feet, one inch tall to the base of the coping as noted here. The next couple of slides will show information about the condition at the other properties in this row and down the block. These photos were taken on the roof of 121 McDonough looking down the road towards Tompkins Avenue. The L's seen throughout are two stories tall with some slightly taller due to different floor to ceiling heights. And this snapshot from Google of the rear of the row shows the existing two story L at 121 McDonough along with the other two story L's. This is the existing rear build, building elevation, which also shows the proposed modifications to the masonry openings as part of the addition. And this is the proposed rear elevation. The existing stucco clad brick facade will remain at the top floor. The three-story addition will be brick clad at the rear facade and at the two side facades. And the proposed addition will run the full width of the property. The applicant has also mentioned the possibility of applying at a later date to add a terrace at the top of the addition, including adding a railing and dropping the sill of one window for a door. This could be reviewed at staff level. And this is the existing building section and the proposed section. This section also shows the proposed metal deck leading from the parlor floor to the rear yard. And the next several slides show the existing and proposed plans for each floor side by side. And that completes the presentation and the applicant is here to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, do we have any questions? Yes, Commissioner Chapin. Yeah, it appears that this is not only the only three-story addition, but it is also the only full-width addition. Is that correct? Or are there other full-width additions that are two-story? I don't know. Correct. Does the applicant wish to answer that? Or Dina, do you want to take that? 
Javeth, are you present and want to answer? I can also answer. Sorry, Javeth here on, the, on behalf of uh, McDonough. Uh, this appears to be the only full width, uh, full width edition, uh, full width uh, building width of the uh, within the entire block. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Let's. I don't see any other questions right now, so we'll move to public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to speak, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And I will turn it over to Lisa Krasavich to take us through the testimony. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I do see hand raised um, with Evelyn Collier. Okay, Evelyn, I've brought you in for the correct item this time. Hi, I'm Evelyn Collier. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Evelyn Collier, Chair of the Landmark Committee, representing Community Board 3. Um, I'm here to speak about application LPC 2105175 for 121 McDonald Street in the Stuyvesant Heights Historic District. Uh, this applicant application is to alter an existing residential building at 121 McDonald Street between Tompkins and Fruit was presented for review hearing and scheduled virtual meeting at Landmarks Preservation Committee on April 12, 2021 by Javis Camino. Um, this residential building situated within the Stuyvesant Heights Historic District is a three-story Italianate masonry and brownstone row house with basement and cellar. The building built in 1872 for owner Curtis L. North on an oversized lot, 21 feet by 120, 120 feet, is one of the nine uniformly designed brownstone. The applicant seeks to remove a two, two feet, five inch portion of the existing partial width rear extension construct a new full width three-story rear extension, parlor level terrace and third story roof terrace. Our key concern on the proposed alteration include third floor of the extension sets an unfavorable precedence with, within the block. It is highly visible from the Throop Avenue and within the block. Visible rooftop bulkhead that disturbs the line of sister building Rear extension ground floor window configuration, slab on grade foundation and future underpinning are inadequate. The commission should review the following position and placement of drainage. Front garden restoration detail, real door and window detail at parlor and ground level, placement and proper support of air conditioning compressor unit. Given the listed concern, Brooklyn Community Board 3 concluded that the proposed rear yard extension will significantly impact the district's form and character and is not aligned with nearby extension. Therefore, Brooklyn Community Board 3 resolves not to support, I'm sorry, resolves to not support the proposed extension to the existing building. Um, Evelyn Collier, Landmark Chair and Richard Flateau, Chairperson of Community Board 3. Uh, we had a full board vote last night. It was 36 in favor. Uh, we had a committee vote on the 12th and it was 10 in favor. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And next we have um, Diego Rabio. Hi everyone. My name is Diego Rovallo from the Historic Districts Council. Um, in examining the block plan, HDC noticed that there are no three-story additions within this donut. This addition is asking to expand the full width uh, and full height. And we believe that a two-story addition would, would better integrate into this context. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And that concludes the testimony. All right, thank you. And Rich, did we receive any additional written testimony? No other additional written comments. Okay, thank you. All right, I'd like to turn back to the applicant and ask if you'd like to respond to any of the comments. Yes, I'd just like to make a comment. Um, 
this existing addition that we have at the rear is uh, non-conforming, non-compliant. Um, we'd like to make it compliant by having a 30 foot rear yard as was required by the Department of Buildings. Given, the, given so, by eliminating two and a half feet, we'd like to extend the full width as it's not visible or minimally visible from uh, through the avenue. Um, as you can see, we've presented photos from the public through fair. We've built a mock-up with highly visible netting of an orange color to demonstrate that it is minimally, but now almost non-visible from through Avenue. Okay. All right, commissioners, any final questions? Okay, I'm starting to unmute you all so that we can close the hearing and begin our discussion. Commissioner Devonshire, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Chapin. Would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thanks. So the hearing is closed and we'll now begin our discussion. And um, we have a, a rear yard addition. It, um, it sits within a context of uh, other additions that are two stories. And so this is a story taller than the majority of the other additions. And it is visible from the street. Um, primarily that, that third floor is what is visible from the street in the context of the other rear facades. So we'll start with this um, discussion. Commissioner Gustafson, would you like to start this one? Yeah, sure. Uh, pr pr pretty straightforward. I think um, the in this case, because it's um, it's it's a full width and a story tall. Um, I think it needs to be uh, taken down to uh, to two stories and uh, preserve the unity of the entire row. Uh, that's it. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Shamir Barron. I think I'm in agreement with uh, Commissioner Gustafson. Commissioner Holford Smith. I agree with that as well. Commissioner Chapin. Uh, yeah, the fact that it's, this is a very intact block with uh, nothing above uh, two stories and also L's, uh, I really don't see approving, I, I couldn't approve a three story and a full width. I do think that uh, the L could be extended further as this is one of the shorter L's uh, and or it could conceivably be a, a maybe a two story full width could be approved, but um, this the combination is really out of character with the this block and uh, especially even across the across the way they're only one story, but you know, looking at this side and looking in the in the context, again, I think I think some extension could be permitted. Certainly, or an enlargement of this, but this solution is just too large for me. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Goldblum. I agree. Uh, two stories. Commissioner Devonshire. Two stories. Commissioner Chen. Uh, I'm in agreement with all the commissioners. Okay. Commissioner Bland. Yeah, same here. I was prepared to uh, say go back those two feet that they were cutting off until I understood that it's a uh, 30 foot rear yard he has to uh, adhere to. So, but still it gets a lot more space on two floors, uh, but not the three floors, two floors full width. Okay, great. And Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, two stories. Okay. So I think we're all in agreement on that. And uh, Commissioner Gustafson, would you make that motion? Sure. Uh, in the matter of LPC 21-0517521 McDonough Street in the Stuyvesant Heights Historic District, the application is to construct a rear yard addition. I know that the building style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Stuyvesant Heights Historic District. 
I recommend approval with a modification, finding that the proposed work will not eliminate or damage any significant architectural features, that the simple massing brick cladding high solid to void ratio and punched masonry openings of the rear facade of the addition will be typical of secondary facades of buildings within this historic district and in keeping with the residential character of the building and row that the addition will not rise to the full height of the building, thereby helping to retain defining aspects of the building's original scale and massing, that the addition will not project further into the rear yard than other existing rear, rear additions at this block and will not diminish the presence of the rear yard or the central green space, that the addition will only be visible from public thoroughfares in an incidental view from a distance within its context of taller secondary facades at the row, and that the combination of the addition's materials, finishes, and simple profile and design will help it to remain a discreet and harmonious presence in streetscape views However, I find that the addition will exceed the height of the rear extension throughout the row and block, thereby diminishing the unity of the row and detracting from the character of the block. Therefore, I recommend that the addition be limited to two stories. Okay. And Commissioner Goldblum, would you second that motion? Second. Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi, I don't believe, has returned. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Okay, with 10 in favor, none opposed, and one not present, the motion carries. All right, so that's approved. Uh, with that modification, please work with the staff to finalize the drawings in accordance with our, our motion today. Okay, so that concludes our day. Thank you commissioners for all of your hard work and uh, commitment and dedication as always. Thank you all and we'll see you next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Sarah, Sarah, can you hang on? I've got a question.